it's Shelby here. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my December mid-month wrap-up. So I'm pretty excited. I can't believe we're already to December. So we only have this one and one other wrap-up for the whole year of 2021 before a brand new year starts. So trying to get this video filmed while my daughter is napping. Hopefully she takes a long enough nap and doesn't wake up while I'm in the middle of filming this because um, this might take a little bit. I read 15 books in the first half of December. Now granted a lot of those were like short stories or more novella length because I've been, it's December, I've been in the Christmas spirit. I have just wanted to read like all of the Christmas books I can get my hands on. That's why you also see I'm filming in front of my Christmas tree. And then I also have the, my chair here that I have some presents wrapped up in cause I kind of was running out of room on the, well, I mean, I could have put them on the floor, but I'm trying to keep them off of the floor because otherwise my child wants to try to dig into them and play with them. And they're not for her so she doesn't need to be getting into other people's Christmas gifts so anyway yes so I read 15 so we're gonna get right into it I'm trying to like do my camera so that you can see like the pretty tree but then also so that like my head's just not like focused like right in the middle of everything so I can put like there that'll work okay so let's just get into it. So the first book that I read in the month of December is going to be Disclaim, which is the third book of the Deliver series by Pam Godwin. Um, this just continues on with a story. So this is about Camilla, who is, um, is our heroine. And she was the first person that Liv and Van from the first two books um, kidnapped and captured and tried to sell as sex slave. So, um, she, in this book, she has been, uh, she's kind of working through some anger issues. Um, she is trying to take down as many sex traffickers as she can, and she just wants to take down the whole sex trafficking kind of business so she ends up they find some with her and her like team of people that she's working with and she ends up going undercover as a slave to a sex trafficker to try to take them down because they're pretty like high up um only to find out that that guy who bought her was um this guy that she had feelings for when she was a teenager that she fell in love with and right but like before I think both of them ended up disappearing or something but before definitely before she ended up disappearing um so this does have a little bit it's kind of a second chance romance because they had feelings for each other beforehand and now she doesn't know what to do because she still has these feelings for him and um feels attraction towards him but she's like this is wrong because he's a bad person he's a sex trafficker um so this just goes on par with the other two books from the series this is a very dark romance there's definitely dubious non-consent slash you know somewhere on there kind of things happening there's abuse there's definitely trauma um the first two books of the series were five stars for me this one i gave more like three and a half stars i don't know i just wasn't feeling this one as much i just don't know if i just really didn't really connect too much to like the heroine as i had from the other two books and then the whole thing with the hero and his backstory and like it comes up like why he's doing the things that he's doing. He was keeping that from her for a while. And I just didn't really understand why he had to keep that from her and why he couldn't just right off the bat tell her what was going on. Um, 
so I don't know it wasn't so far it hasn't been my favorite from the series but I am going to continue on um, at some point and continue this series um, then I read Christmas Babies for the Italian by Lynn Graham this one honestly I don't remember a ton from this book this one I think is more a little, a little bit more like novella length I believe this is about our hero who is wanting to get revenge against this guy who got his sister pregnant but he doesn't want anything to do with the pregnancy and the baby and anything um so he's wanting to get revenge on him and he finds out that he also has another illegitimate child that is like in her 20s or something that nobody knows about so his plan is to woo her and then like bring her to this function that that guy is going to be at and announce in public about him having an illegitimate child and giving him like a bad reputation or something um that's mainly all I remember about this one I gave it three stars this was just okay it wasn't it gets three stars because it wasn't a bad book and for the most part I did enjoy it while I was reading it but it wasn't something that's very was very memorable to me um and it just didn't really wow me and I didn't quite understand that whole revenge scheme that he had it just really it just seemed very lame to me so then I read In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. This book, I think this book came out last year, but I never read it. So I decided to read it this year. Um, this was pretty fun. This is about this girl and she is um, at like the start of this book. It's like Christmas time, like Christmas is kind of over, but every year for Christmas, her family and this other family that her family is like best friends with, they always end up going and renting like this cabin um for Christmas time like every year and like this year everything's gone it's like a disaster at least she feels that way because she ended up like kissing her best friend or something but she doesn't actually like him um and she's worried because she has feelings for her best friend's older brother and thinks that she ruined things with him and then she's all upset because they're going to end up selling the cabin or something along the whatever so they're going back home and she just like makes this like wish that she wants things to be better I don't remember specifics but it's she ends up going back and re-experiencing the Christmas like to when they just got to the cabin kind of thing and so it's very much like a Groundhog Day kind of story where it just kind of cycles over um she like dies somehow and it like goes back to the beginning until she can kind of figure out what she's supposed to do um to make things better for herself um and she does end up telling her best friend's older brother that she has feelings for him and he kind of lets on that he has feelings for her so I gave this four stars I thought this was pretty cute um it didn't have as much of the groundhog day kind of scenario as I would kind of hope um it only happened like a couple of times but overall it was still pretty enjoyable it was funny um it's quirky so it was pretty good then i read dirty treats by jade west this is an erotic novella um set around christmas time um this is about a married couple and they have like kids and it's about the dad the guy he is like digging through their garage trying to find really like, Christmas stuff and he comes across this jar that has all these slips of paper in that him and his wife had put down these like dirty sexy kind of scenarios in like a long time ago and he is wanting to try to kind of spice up their relationship because they don't really have um like sex like they used to so I think it's like the night before Christmas or something they decide to have like a date night together and they 
do all these different kind of scenarios from this jar. I gave this four stars. I thought this was, um, it was pretty much what I was expecting. There's not a whole ton of plot to it. It's mostly just a lot of like sexy times. Um, and if you've ever read a Jade West book, it's pretty dirty stuff. Um, so this is pretty enjoyable. Um, and I, yeah, I liked it. Um, then we have The Christmas Pact by Vi Keeland and Penelope Ward. This is another novella Christmas kind of story. This is about these two co-workers, um, although they don't know each other. Like they both work at, I think like a publishing company, but she's in fiction and he works in like nonfiction, but they have the same name, but like reversed. Like his first name is her last name and his last name is her first name. So they end up getting each other's emails because people like mix their emails up all the time. So he ends up getting an email because she had written to this um, like advice columnist or whatever about how she, her mom always puts out this like Christmas card talking about how great her family is and about how her siblings are doing all these like incredible things, but she's not doing anything. And he ends up getting the response to it and like emails her and it comes becomes this whole big thing and then they go to a Christmas party and actually meet each other and they decide that they're going to fake date and he's going to come home with her for Christmas because she's tired of being like the sibling that like doesn't have all these extraordinary things going on like I think one of her siblings is a doctor and goes to like Africa and does things and just like all these like super duper incredible things and she's just like I'm still single I just work at a publishing place I'm not doing anything um so she decides they decide a fake date so that he can come and help her get her mother kind of off her back about things and then he is also going to take her to his family for like new year's because there's a wedding that's happening that he doesn't really want to go to and he thinks having her with him will kind of help things out um I gave this four stars this was really enjoyable um I loved the kind of like the spark between the two characters. I love the whole scenario. I'm very much into the whole like fake dating kind of trope. The only thing that I had issues with was that I just thought it was weird that their names were like switch swapped. So like if then they bring it up in the story that if they ever get married like what are they gonna do? Like is she just gonna be because I think I don't know if her name's Riley or one of the like but is she just gonna be Riley Riley like it just I don't know how that would work it was really weird but overall that doesn't really detract from the story um it was still very enjoyable then I read Nick and Noel's Noel's Christmas Playlist by Cody Hall I know that a lot of people have been reading this book this year this is a friends to lovers story so Cody or not Cody that's that's the author's name. Um, Nick is just back from deployment. Um, he's back in his hometown and he finds out that his longtime girlfriend had been cheating on him and he thought she was going to be his like forever kind of person, you know, went, wanted to get married to her, but that's, that's not happening. And then he's also like meeting up with Noelle, who is his best friend, from forever and they are kind of getting together and hanging out again because you know they haven't been able to get together and they start to have some sparks happen and they start feeling more like more attraction towards each other but Noel is very hesitant to move forward into like a um romantic relationship with him because she feels like because she's very wary because her parents have died in the past and um she's very worried about getting close to anybody that if she does they'll just get taken away from her too so she feels like 
if she gets in a romantic relationship with her best friend and falls in love with him that something's gonna happen and she's going to lose him so I give this three and a half stars um, this wasn't a bad story by any means. I did enjoy it. I did have some issues with a lot. There was just a lot of side characters to this story and it was very hard for me to keep track of everybody. And I thought that could have been toned down a bit. Um, but, and then friends to lovers isn't my favorite trope. So that I think is just more of a me thing, but it was a pretty good story. Then I read Hooked by Emily McIntyre because I've heard everybody reading about this book and saying how good it is. So this is like kind of a Peter Pan retelling. So this is about Hook and he is wanting to get revenge against the person that killed his parents, which just so happens to be um, Wendy's father. And I think he's kind of supposed to be like the Peter Pan character somewhat so he's wanting to get revenge um and he decides that the he ends up meeting Wendy and he decides the best way to sort of get revenge prior to killing Wendy's father is to date her and take her virginity and then throw it in his face but he also, while he is like talking with Wendy, is starting to feel things for Wendy and feel attraction. Well, he obviously feels attraction towards her. Um, and then there just, it just becomes this big old plot of him wanting to kill Wendy. And she is kind of stuck in the middle because she likes him, but it's her father. But then she kind of finds out that her father hasn't really done too many great things, that maybe her father has been lying to her about some things. Um, I give this four stars. I really enjoyed this. This was a pretty dark romance um, and a darker take on the Peter Pan retelling but it was very enjoyable and I I know she I think she like just announced that there's going to be another book in this series which I don't know that it actually like relates to the story I think it's just she's raving maybe like a series of like standalones but I am pretty excited for that one and I'm not 100% sure what if it's going to be like another type of like um retelling of some sort and if it is like what story she's trying to retell but it was really good okay then we have there's something about Mary which is the um sequel to the uh Nick and Noel's playlist by Cody Hall. This is about Mary who is um, Nick's sister and she is kind of feeling <sighs> she has had a uh, not so great luck with love. Um, she moved out of the town to try to like discover herself and find somebody but she never did so she's back home and at home she's trying to like she hasn't dated for a year and she's just trying to figure out what she wants from life um it like what she wants to do like career wise um and then she also is trying to figure out what she actually wants in a partner and she's wanting to kind of take over her family they her family has like a christmas tree farm and she's wanting to learn the ropes so that when her father retires that she can kind of take over that business but she kind of feels like her father doesn't really want her to do that because he just hired this new guy to come work and she thinks that her father's gonna have him take over the business instead of her and she just feels like her family isn't really taking her very seriously um but then this guy who is the new um, foreman of the farm he is also kind of worried that since she's showing so much interest that he's gonna get booted and he's really worried about that because he is a single parent and he needs you know some sort of like steady income kind of place and he moved back to town he was there before he grew up in the town um because he likes the atmosphere of the town for his son 
and like the close knit kind of community um, and that everybody's there to kind of help each other kind of feeling. So him and Mary end up starting to have feelings for each other, but neither one of them kind of like, they have a little bit of an enemies thing going on, but not like too bad. And so they both decide to get on this dating app and just kind of try it out and see what happens. And they both end up matching to each other unknowingly. They don't know that they've matched. Um, and then that kind of starts, they start talking to each other and that kind of starts their romance. I give this four stars. I like this a little bit better than the first book. Um, I really like the like single dad aspect because he's such a good dad. And Mary was so worried about that she's like not says she's not very good with kids but she was great with him and just like the relationship between Mary and his son and then them together and it was very it had a lot of funny moments to it too it was just it was really great and I loved it then I read The Naughty List by Ellie Mae McGregor um I previously read her other novella with The Witch's Wolves back in Halloween so it was time to read this one so she wrote a Christmas story so this is about a um, newly separated woman um, on Christmas Eve. She is alone because her children are spending Christmas Eve with their father and she's feeling pretty lonely. She wants to um, have like some sexy times and she dresses up in like some lingerie but it was mostly for like herself and making herself kind of feel good. And then she wakes up and Santa is there and Santa is just mesmerized by her and was distracted by her because in her sleep she was kind of doing some, you know, self-love while she was sleeping. And he was just like totally entranced by her. And so this is definitely about, this is her getting... Um, having some sexy times with Santa. So I give this four stars. I really enjoyed this story. It was great. I loved the Santa character and I loved her and she's doing stuff for herself now that she's like a new woman kind of thing. And I just thought it was really great. And of course it's a little novella. It's very steamy too. So this was just, it was very good. Then we have Paddled by Krampus by Harley LaRue, which is another um, novella. This is another erotic novella. Um, this is just a short and sweet little story about this girl who is, a, I think she's like an apprentice to become like a magical kind of apprentice to become like a witch maybe or a wizard or something. And she has not been a very good student. She lies and steals things from her teacher um, and just is not a lot of not very good things. So because she's been a naughty girl, Krampus has come to punish her. And that's that's basically story and it happens pretty much how you would expect, you know, and basically how the title sounds. She gets paddled by Krampus. So I give those three and a half stars. Um, there was nothing wrong with this story. I just, I didn't really like, I was hoping to kind of connect to the characters, but I didn't really, this is just basically pure smut. So, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. So, you know, if you're looking for something steamy and paddly, then check this one out. Then I read The Kringle Academy by Beatrix Hollow. Um, this is a reverse harem. This is a, a full length book. It's not a novella. And this is about this girl. She is an elf and she is a, specifically a Christmas elf. And she has come to the Kringle Academy, which is established by Santa to help in the whole Christmas cause. Um, 
And so she has infiltrated the Kringle Academy because she is planning to kidnap Santa because she wants revenge against him because he stole Christmas from her and her people. And she is wanting to be infiltrate the Kringle Academy because she needs to um, join this like competition that they're having because the prize of the competition allows her to get some of her powers back and restore her kingdom to its glory. And so meanwhile, since she has kidnapped Santa, kidnapped Santa, um, she ends up meeting Jack Frost, who is a professor at the Academy, and then Santa's nephew and um, a descendant of Krampus um, are the three men for her harem of the story. But anyway, so they are wanting to investigate Santa's disappearance, and they're also wanting to investigate this strange new girl that just showed up at this Academy and figure out what she is about and what she's trying to do. So... I give us four stars. This was very enjoyable. This had all kinds of Christmassy traditions and references sprinkled in. Um, it had very a lot of good humor to it, which is pretty on par. It sounds like for Beatrix Hollow, I've read this is my third book by her, and she just has this kind of snarky, comedic kind of um, writing style, but then she also has some great steamy moments to it, so I, I really enjoyed this one. This one was good. Then I read Once Upon a Duke by Erica Ridley. This is the first book of her 12 Dukes of Christmas story, so this is supposed to be like the um, 12 Days of Christmas, like Christmas Carol. Um, so this is about this guy and he is very much like a Scrooge kind of character. He does not like Christmas and he is having to come back to his hometown, um, because his grandfather has passed away and he is getting things in his grandfather's will and he did not like his grandfather, but he's specifically wanting this locket that used to own that that used to be owned by his mother um so why he doesn't like christmas is because um his mother i think like died i, I think it was in childbirth like around christmas time he just has a lot of like deaths happen around christmas time and so he just doesn't like the season and his grandfather was he's kind of known like he's almost like a hero to the town when he gets to the town everybody loves his grandfather and thinks he is like the best human being possible but this the main hero guy hates him because his grandfather was not a nice man to him was not loving or caring towards him whatsoever um and while he's in the town he meets he ends up meeting this woman that on prior trips to the town, he had, um, I think he had kissed her. They had started to kind of feel attraction towards each other and kind of start have feelings for each other. But he kind of ran away from the town before anything could get, could get started. So it has a little bit of a second chance romance to it. Um, he ends up having to stay in the town because something in his grandfather's will was like he had to, in order for him to get the locket, he had to stay in town for a certain amount, a certain period of time to set up this like partridge in a pear tree, something or other. Um, I give this three stars. This was okay. I had some issues keeping track of like the people in the story but um and I just again like again I think it's more so these tropes are not me like it's all more a me thing um second chance romances are just not really my thing I just don't like them as much so I think that's more so why I rated this a little bit lower not because it was like a bad story by any means it was still really good then I read Twisted Christmas which this took me a while to read because this is a romance anthology um so it's hard for me to kind of talk about it because it's it's got several different stories in it um I gave this three stars mostly just because 
and especially anthologies can be hard for me to rate but I'm rating it based on overall how I felt about most of the stories and honestly there were a few stories in this anthology that I ended up skipping because I just didn't really care about them but anyway so this is a Christmas romance anthology but all of the um short stories in this romance are like taboo in some nature so like I know there's like a guardian ward romance there's teacher student um I'm trying to think definitely like age gap there's just all the different like taboo kind of scenarios that you can think of they have a like some sort of like Christmas story in it um there were some that I really really enjoyed but for the most part they were just they were okay and I just I think I became by the end of it I was just so tired of it because it's just so long because there's so many stories in it it just took me forever and I was just ready to move on to something else by the time I was done with it so so then we have Kiss of a Duke which is the second book of the 12 Dukes of Christmas um series by Erica Ridley this one I enjoyed a lot more than the first book this is about the hero the heroine um excuse me is a scientist and I just I don't know I just loved her she um she does not believe in love she believes strictly in things that are science and she is specifically a chemist and she has invented this um cologne that mimics like pheromones that animals give off to find like their mate or whatever and so she's made a cologne to mimic this for men so that they can help them like to help them attract women and she is working on a perfume for the opposite happens so to help women attract men and she so she's working on this perfume and she's wanting to test it out against this man who is known he's a rake basically and she wants to try to see if she can get this guy who is a rake to feel attraction towards her because of her perfume that she has and then the in the meantime of course this is their romance i gave this one four stars i really enjoyed this one mostly because i just love in historical romance if i can talk i love in historical romances where there is a like strong female character who isn't necessarily like wanting to find a husband like she's a scientist and she like I just think it's really it's really cool to me um and of course then like the rake guy in the story all neither one of them believe in love but then they end up falling in love anyway and I I don't know I just thought those was very cute I really enjoyed this one and then the last one that I read, I was kind of in like a historical romance kind of mood. So then I read Masquerade, which is the first book in a series by Victoria Vale. I read this one because I was re listening, not listening, I was watching some of um, the Book Refuge's uh, videos. And Jen had talked about Victoria Vale, about how she's one, like a steamier historical romance author. So I knew I needed to check her out because I like steam in my romances. And I find that a lot of historical romances aren't that steamy. So I was very interested in checking some of her stuff out. So I got this one because I think it was actually like free it was either free or it was like actually on like Kindle Unlimited. I think all of her other books like I, you actually have to buy. Um, so this is about this girl. She is a debutante like out in society. So she is it's the, the season has started and you know her parents want her to make a match and get married. Um, but she is finding that she just is not interested in any of her prospects like nothing against any of the men um she just finds them all to be very boring she is very much interested in having 
not even necessarily like a love match. She has been very interested in sex and she wants to have a relationship that is passionate. And so she's trying to find that, which she can't. And then she also kind of decides, you know, if she can't find somebody that she feels such a strong sexual attraction towards, she at least wants to have some sort of like passion with somebody before she ends up getting married. So there is this one guy who ends up being a duke that she does feel attraction towards and she ends up, but she's like, there's no way that he would ever be interested in her. Um, she's just this lowly, you know, debutante girl, um, just coming out into society. So she ends up one night sneaking away and going to this masquerade party that she is a rather like risque kind of party that, you know, her parents definitely don't want her going to. Um, but she sneaks out anyway and goes to this masquerade to meet this guy. And because they can't really see each other, they start to have some sexy kind of times and whatnot. And they kind of have like a one night stand situation that turns into several night stands, if you know what I mean. Um, and I just, I very much enjoyed this. It was four stars. I loved the um, steam that is in this book, but then I also really liked the, like the story. I liked the um, background of the heroine, how she feels like she is a sexual creature and she is wanting to take charge of that, which I really applaud. I love female characters that are like, hey, I like to have sex and I want some and I'm going to take this into my own hands and do what I can to get what I want. I just think that's just really cool. Um, and then I really liked the hero of this story too and how like they start having feelings for each other. It was just, that bit was very cute, but then the rest of it was also like the steam in it was really great. I was very pleasantly surprised by this and I definitely need to check out some more Victoria Vale books. Um, and then I think she has like a, I think Jen said she has another name that she writes under with like Minerva or something. So I need to check those stories out too and just see what else she has to offer because I really enjoyed this one. And like I said, this is the first in a series. So I'll probably end up reading the rest of the books in this series too. So there we go. I knew this was going to be, all of my wrap ups are very long because I read so many books and it's just hard to like talk about them very quickly. But those are going to be all the books that I read in the first half of December. So let me know down below if you've read any of these books. What are some of the books that you've read for December? Make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you like this video. And also make sure you hit the subscribe button so we can stay friends forever. <laughs> and so that you can see, watch more of my videos whenever I post them. So um, anyway, I look forward to seeing all the next one. Bye guys.